live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, live a life worth living, do work that they love, have great relationships, all of it. 888-825-5225. It's 888-825-5225. We're taking real calls from real people who are going through all kinds of challenges in their life, and we're going to help you out. Our promise is to sit with you and walk alongside you as we figure out what's the next right step. 888-825-5225. I'm John Deloney, joined here by Jade Warshaw, and we're taking your calls on just about anything and everything. Let's run out to Salt Lake City and talk to the great and wonderful Stacy. What's up, Stacy? Hi. What's up? Ah, nothing much. Just hanging out here with my son. What's up with you? <laughs> we are just hanging out together, too. How can we help? Um, I am calling because I, um, my husband and I can't afford childcare and we're not succeeding financially. We're really struggling Mm -hmm. and I'm just trying to figure out what better we can do than what we're already doing. Wow. How many kids do you have? Um, one, he was a surprise and he's eight weeks old. Eight weeks. Wow. You guys are in the the thick of it. Cool. Um, so what's the solution now? Are you just staying home? Um, I'm on maternity leave. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be going back to work in about four weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, I was full-time. I'm still technically full-time, but um, the hope is to go back part-time. But it's it's retail, so it's in-person. So I'm looking for something I could do remotely so I could stay home with him. Okay. And then my husband works in an office. So is the issue that you're having a hard time finding the part-time job that you want to make this work? Or is the problem that you're having a hard time finding a daycare price that would work in any case? I'm, I'm looking, I'm having a hard time finding remote work. Um, I'm hoping to work remotely full time. Um, And also I just, uh, my husband knew I brought some, a lot of debt into the marriage um, Uh and um, we were working at paying it off. How much is it? surprised us. Um, between car, personal, and um, and credit cards, and um, a school, probably between thirty and forty thousand. Okay. Um, we're working on the credit cards first. I just dealt with a lot of mental health struggles growing, um, you know, in my young adult years, and so. Um, I, and also I just grew up poor, so I yeah. tried to learn on my own how to, do, how to do it all. And I didn't fully succeed. So 45,000 between those that you listed. Between 30 and 40. Yeah. Between 30 and 40. Okay. And does your yeah. husband have any debt or he's not um, bringing any into the relationship? He didn't bring any other than, um, his truck, but his parents are currently paying that. And how much is that? I, I'm not sure just because, um. Uh, just because it's not one of my current bills, but it was a used truck, and so I'm pretty sure it's like, you know, between ten and fifteen thousand. Okay, uh, and um, it, it, yeah, fifteen thousand at the most. If you had to guess, I'm sorry, I'm just getting the particulars so I get a lay of the land. No, you're good. Um, if you had to guess between the two of you, because it sounds like you're not fully combined on your finances, it sounds like you kind of have a, a separate thing going on. But if you had to guess, uh, what do you both make combined? Uh, before mm-hmm. you before you make these career changes, what was it before? Um, we we were making about four thousand a month total. Like we work together, but we do a separate accounts at the moment, um, and just because we never we never did combine them. But we work together on paying stuff, so I know we make about four thousand. He pays rent, um, and I pay pretty much everything else. So. Let me clarify, because a lot of people do this thing where it's like, I make my money, you make your money. And then we throw some of our money into this joint pile that pays all the bills. But there's also other money in my personal account. That 4000 is that all the money combined or that's is that total, just bill yeah. money? What yeah, does he do for a total. living? Okay. He, um, ironically, he works in finance. He's a debt collector. <laughs> so he doesn't make enough money. Um, no, he doesn't make enough money. Um, he, he, um, he just started in, like his career and stuff. Well, cool. He made. just ended that career cause he's got to go make more money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And he sometimes makes bonuses and stuff, but that's could care less it. about that. It's not enough. 
Yeah. And I don't know Uh, that you can go to not working or even working part time. I think whatever you do, you're going to need to work full time until he's able to make that spread as well. His mommy still paying his truck payment. Could she wash your kid a few hours a day? No, we're in different states. Okay. And, um, yeah, we're we're in different states, and uh, I am planning on working remotely full time as soon as I can find something. It's just a matter of finding something. Okay. And I'm just like running out of time, and we're how, how hard are you looking right now? Are you sending out fifteen, I'm, twenty applications a day? Probably not that many a day. Probably three or four a day, just because um, you know taking care of my son and stuff. But I'm applying to as many as I can. Okay. If and I'm reaching out to people and stuff like that. If in four weeks, when you're uh, leave is over. If you haven't found that full-time remote job, what do you think the plan of action would be? In your mind, what's the course of action at that point? I'm hoping that's not the case, but if you find yourself in that situation, what would you do? Uh, at that point, I'll work evenings and weekends at my um, current job mm-hmm. and probably do DoorDash during the day with my son. And would that be enough to cover the daycare? Um. We, like, we aren't comfortable doing daycare, and, like, um, I I want him with me. And so whatever work I want to do, it's something I could do with him. Like, that's why I'm looking for remote work. Here's the deal. You may have answered this question several years ago with some of your financial choices. And I know this is hard to hear, but you owe $45,000. And so what you want to, not to mention whatever your husband owes. More like 35, yeah. Thir- whatever it is. And Sorry. here's the problem. A, you don't fully know what that number is, and you don't know what his number is. You don't know what exactly the amount of money you make is, because you don't know if he has a separate account or if his mommy's sending him money to help with the, but you don't know. And uh, so, I have access to his account, full access to his account. like To the one he gives you. Account. Jade and I wouldn't have jobs if husbands and wives told each other the truth all the time about money. That's right. And so this isn't a math problem. This is a wife who is living the, the life of a single mom inside of her own house. And y'all have to get together. And he has to recognize he's got to go make a whole bunch more money. And he just started a career. That career does not provide for his family at this moment. Mm-hmm. And you want to stay home with this baby? You may have to work for a season to get that 35 grand knocked out so that you can afford to stay home with this baby. Yeah. And I know that's scary. I know that's hard. But we love you too much to not tell you the truth. That's right. You have a lot more years ahead of you with that baby. It's And it's easy to forget and, and think that it's just right now, but you've got years and years to stay at home with that kid. She got a big, big hole. The, all of this starts with you sitting down with your husband and saying, I'm so scared I can't breathe. We have to put everything on the table and tell the truth. Hey, folks, you know that sinking feeling when you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer? You need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre approval and a secured interest rate, plus a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. This is the Ramsey Show, 888-825-5225. I'm John Deloney, joined by Jade Warshaw. Jade, what did you do? I didn't do anything. You did. Uh, you super did. Look, I posted a video on Facebook specifically about how like zero credit scores work. And these folks came for my life, John. Dude, they, they were showering you with the haterade. <laughs> so I was thinking, you know what? I usually stay out of the comments or I'm like pretty you know, 
just nonchalant about it. But these these comments were extra. And I was like, you know what? I need to I need to I need to clap back on this. So let's play the video so you guys can just see how innocent what I said was. (laughs) And you can be on my side and then we'll chop it up. All right, let's do it. It usually takes about a year to see your credit score go down to absolute zero Mm. if you completely stop borrowing money. And here's the thing, if you dilly dally with this and you're like, I'm gonna keep that one credit card open, it's never gonna go to zero. You're just gonna have a bad credit score. And then when you try to go buy a house, you're gonna run into problems. Look, (laughs) yeah, I stand by that. I stand by that message, I approve that message. All right, I'm gonna read some of the haterade. All right, read it. Chad says, these people are crazy. Zero credit score is not even possible. Okay. Uh, Tim says, this is absolutely not correct. You need to raise your credit score, not lower it. This explains so much about some people. Mm. (laughs) Mm. Derek says, this kind of crap's annoying. While it's possible to buy a house without a credit score, it isn't worth the hoops. Okay. Better off with a credit score. The next one's my favorite. Yeah. Jacob says... Says the woman with tons of assets to lean on and has no need for credit card. I can't. I can't. I'm coming, ah. out of my, I'm coming out of my seat right now because, and I did reply to that when I was like, oh, you must not know me or my story if you think I came from wealth and assets. Are you kidding me? I got to throw my pin across the room. Oh, hold on. Hold on. This, this cat says, I swear, the Ramsey's team's advice on credit is the stupidest beep beep ever. Ah. Good luck getting approved for Jack beep beep with no credit. That's the whole point. Here's my thing. Here's my thing, John. And this is crazy to me. People would rather be right about what they think and about what they know than be free, than be happy, than be better off in life. They'd they'd rather be right about the fact that there's no other way to get ahead in society than to be strapped with debt for eternity. Yes. Like you have to play the debt game. That's the only, it's the only way to make it in America is to have a credit score. Are you kidding me? You'd rather be right about that. And I'm like, really? You want to be right about something that keeps you in slavery your entire life? Forever. It's that important to you? And dude, for all of human history, this is how governments captured their citizens. Right. By giving them a plot of land and saying, when it's paid off, then it's all yours. Then you're free. And the next year it's like, oh, well, we had to raise the price right. on it. So, uh, And they do that in perpetuity. And now we wear this score like we win something. And I'm the only one. The folks in this room are some of the only ones in the United States, (laughs) in the world, telling y'all, hey, there's a better way. And we we try to do it with love. We try to tell y'all, hey, (laughs) there's a better way. We want you to be free. We want to help you. We exist to help the people outside of these walls. And it's crazy that people clap back on me like I'm trying to hurt them. And they're not clapping back. At the credit collectors. They're not <laughs> clapping back at FICO or Experian or TransUnion. They're yelling at me when I'm the one I'm the one going, hey, there's a way that you don't have to play this stupid game. You don't have to rack your family with debt. You don't have to, you know, rob Peter to pay Paul and move this money over here and keep your credit around for X amount of years with X amount of varieties of credit with X amount of percentage use. Like that is a game and the goalpost is constantly moving. And one of the things I noticed that they were mad at me as I said, hey, If you're going to run our plan, like run it to the end zone, like do it all the way. Don't do this mess of, well, I'm going to pay off my credit, but I'm going to keep a couple of cards open or keep that one card open just in case, because that'll jack your credit even worse. Right. Because there are ways that they're measuring your credit. It's not just, hey, have one credit card open. You have to utilize that credit and you have to keep it around for a long time and you have to make sure the percentage is right. Otherwise, yeah, you'll have a score, but it won't be great. It'll probably be pretty bad. And the fact is having a, I'm going to say it and I'm going to scream it till the cows come home. Having a zero credit score is just as good, in my opinion, better than having a 750 or an 800 because I don't have to play the game of debt. I get to be my own woman, my own man, my husband, and we're autonomous and we are free and we don't have to be slaves to the system so if you don't like that you can go ahead and put that yoke back on and they can (laughs) ha yeah and you'll just pull the plow of debt for them and you can do that the rest of your life i'm not going as for me in my house making other people rich at your expense look hey I, I, i can we run through this real quick yeah these people are crazy zero credit score is not even possible you're false 
False. It's false. Once you pay off your debt, like I said, it takes about, and, and you close the accounts, you've got to close them. It takes about six to 12 months for your credit score to roll to zero. That's how it goes. This is absolutely not correct. You need to raise your credit score, not lower it. Why? False. Why? Yeah. Tell, why? You tell me why. So that one day you can go get on both knees and hold your hands up and say, dear lender, please. Please. And they'll say, well, let me, let me look in my secret file and see what your score is. Yeah. Instead of sitting down with your wife and when your air conditioner goes out and you have become your own bank over 15 years, which is mm-hmm. what took me and my wife, and your argument is not, please, please, can I? It's, you call. I'm not calling, you I call. I know, I know. I don't want to call, that. you call. I love it. The, that's, the, that's the most annoying fight you have. Yeah. Right? And I think people forget the fact that when you decide, John, like, hey, we're going to pay off our debt. That simultaneously means, and we're not going back into debt and we're not doing this thing called credit anymore. And the biggest argument is, yeah, but if you don't have a credit score, how are you going to live? And the biggest two areas that people are thinking about are cars and living situation, right? Can you buy a car without credit? Yes, you can. It's called buying a car in cash. And I'm not talking about that you always have to save $40,000 or $50,000 to buy the newest model. The cars that Sam Warshaw and Jade Warshaw drive are from 2013. And I think we paid less than, I don't know, 20000 for both. Yeah, each of them. That's how you do this. You don't have, and don't get me wrong, I could have way more car than that, John. At this point in my life, I just don't care about it that much. So don't tell me it's not possible. You save up your money and it takes time. Uh, let me just say this. My husband and I, for the first time in our marriage, are a two-car family. And that happened last year because that's just the life we chose. We didn't have to do that for that long, but we said, you know what? I don't care about going into debt over cars. And when we feel like paying up cash and buying a second car, we will. And that's what you're talking about. You just choose. It was in, it was up until this this year. I, had, I went from a 96 to a 2012, and I was driving 2012 forever. Yeah. And Dave, just, just Dave, as my friend, goes, hey, I know what I pay you. Right. What, what are you doing? <laughs> and I was like, uh, he's like, you're trying to like make a point. And I yeah. go, I, I, I honestly don't I care. I don't care. And it was only that I was like, I'm going to get. And by the way, I went all in <laughs> on a Highlander. It's Come not like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And dude, every day I get in it, I smile so big, like like I've beat somebody, and like, like I've won some game. Mm-hmm. And my buddies are like, it's it's not it's not a cool car, John. Come on, <laughs> you know what I, I mean? know. But it's like I know, but it, it doesn't have a CD player in it anymore, right? Here's the deal: when you unhook yourself from the external expectation, yeah. My wife likes me. And you know how I know she likes me? Because she was dating me when I was driving an 88 Tercel Easy Hatchback. Let's go. So <laughs> it, I know this is love, right? <laughs> and that when we were making it, when we were, when we, when Dave was paying us more money than any, Deloney's had ever wrapped their head around, I, I didn't need to prove anything to anybody. No. It, it's not a game, right? It's, it's like, yeah, I, I was able to cobble together the money and pay for that in cash, and it's just yeah. my, it's mine. The money. See what I'm saying? What it's, you it's buy just, it doesn't determine game. your worth. Hey, uh, one more thing. Um, what about housing? Let me hit this right quick. People think you can't buy a house with a zero credit score. Yes, you can. It's called manual underwriting. I did it. John Deloney did it. George Campbell did it. I know Rachel Cruz did it. All these folks did it. All you need is payment history, 12 months showing your trade line, cell phone bills, utilities. You need actual money. You need to show 12 months of bank statements and just your last 30 days of But that's of so many stubs. hoops. It's, it's not. It's almost the same as the normal <laughs> it's process. Not. It's not. Hey, by the way. Churchill Mortgage is a place to go guys yes and man if you just weren't so rich uh you wouldn't be able to talk like this jade (laughs) hey folks dr john deloney here with some great news you get to choose Whatever you do, good or bad moving forward, the choice is yours. And when you're intentional about making good choices over time, they become healthy habits, like choosing to slow down and make time for a daily practice of prayer and meditation. One thing that has helped me with a daily practice of meditation and prayer is Hallow. Hallow is the number one prayer app in the world, and they're giving you three months free to get started. 
That's three months free to prioritize your mental health and be intentional about finding peace through calming music, prayers, meditation, and more. And Hallow isn't just Catholic. You can tailor the content towards your faith tradition. If you don't have a faith tradition, this is a great place to learn more about it. From scripture readings and prayers to journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice mindfulness, build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life, and choose peace. Remember, Hallow is giving you 90 days free. Imagine the peaceful habits you can establish in 90 days. Go to hallow.com slash Ramsey today and follow the simple prompts to start your free 90-day trial. That's hallow.com slash Ramsey. This is The Ramsey Show, 888-825-5225. I'm John Deloney, joined by Jade Warshaw. Let's go out to Destin, Florida, and talk to Josh. What's up, brother Josh? Hey, how you doing? Good, man. How are you? I'm okay. I appreciate you taking the call. You got it, man. What's up? Oh, well, I guess I'll cut right to it. Um, So I've been following you guys for a little while, trying to get my finances on track. But I've come to a decision i need to start handling my life and get some stuff on track and i want to go to rehab mm. so okay. i can uh quit my drinking dude i'm proud but, of you man i'm hold on, hold on hold on don't blow by that that's huge what led you here um there are millions and millions of people in the united states that need to make this decision and i want them to hear where you landed well, you'll be a well, gift i mean in the past i battled with uh other substance abuse issues and I let that go. I've been clean from all that and I just kind of picked up the bottle and I'm just tired of it. Tired of doing the same things over and over again. Tired of relying on something to feel like I need it to function. Awesome. I'm proud of you, man. I'm proud of you. So, uh, how can we help? Well, pretty much my insurance situation, the only way to get into treatment uh, it covers most of it except for about six thousand dollars. Okay, six to ten thousand dollars, depending on location. So, so, really not trying to get into any more debt. Sure, but I want to take care of this. Um, the first question I would ask is, um, often. And I'm talking about rehab places that are not like go to Malibu or you're in Destin, not like a beachfront place that's going to be a resort. Okay. Um, yeah. Often, if you sit down, places will waive the gap between the insurance and the the what the cash out. Okay. It's it, it's a it, it's a, the equivalent of a scholarship program. So I would have that conversation have, with the place. Have you I've done that? I've been calling and asking for scholarships. I've called. Hundreds of places, probably. You haven't called Maybe hundreds. Maybe a slight exaggeration, but yeah, a lot, a big exaggeration. But yes, okay, yes. And nobody will waive the gap. No, not that'll cover my insurance. What do you mean? Because that's the that's the cheap the cheapest thing I've been able to find is a six thousand dollar copay. Oh, that's is that your deductible? Cheapest. Yes, that's the cheapest thing I can get. I've applied for scholarships. Okay, they're saying they're not doing it. So, do you have? Guns or guitars or a truck? You have something you can sell? No, I mean I've got a truck, but it's my work truck. Can you go down in value on it? What's it worth? No, I'm upside down in it. What's it worth? Uh, probably about eleven grand. What do you owe on it? About two hundred thousand miles on it. Twelve. What What would happen? You owe twelve; it's worth eleven. What would happen if you sold that and went down half the value and just bought yourself a little truck that that'll get you? Is there anything? Do you see what I'm saying? Like this is temporary. No, I get what you're. I get what you're saying, but it's a truck with two hundred thousand miles on it, mm -hmm. and not that many people are gonna spend eleven thousand dollars. Well, if it's worth eleven thousand, there's a whole bunch of people will, my friend, because yeah. they're in your situation oh. too. Uh, what about a parent or family member? Nope. Unfortunately, no. Okay. So 
here's what I would tell you. I would start, if I'm you, in this situation, I would start with a couple of different uh, areas. Number one, I would walk in this evening to the local AA meeting. Have you done that yet? Yeah. Okay. I would ask around and tell them I've got a gap. And my guess is there's people who would say, I, I know X, Y, and Z. I know this person. My church has a sponsorship program. There's, a, there's, there's gap payment here. We can help figure this out. I would start there. Okay. Okay. And this is you being super, super vulnerable. It sounds like you're so sick of all this that you're kind of done giving a crap. Is that fair? Absolutely. Okay. The second thing is I'm going to give you three months of free better help. I want you to talk to a, a licensed counselor. I want you to hang on the line here. And I want you to make sure that just full stop rehab is the right move, the right next move for you. Okay. Okay. They might say, hey, I want you to go every day to a meeting in the evening and in the morning for 30 days, and let's circle back before we make this list, this entire, this big leap, okay? Okay. The third thing is, I want you to be honest, deeply honest, with what you can part with right now. Because here's what I'm trying to avoid. I don't want you to come out on the other side of a 30-day in-treatment program or a 28-day um, um, outpatient program mm -hmm. and have that clarity of mind, that sobriety, the light is on, and then that credit card bill hits you right yeah. in the mouth. That's what I want to yeah. avoid at all costs. And that's another thing I'm worried about. Finances, bills keep coming. They I mean, do I've keep coming. Even been looking into detoxes, and it's still about that same number. Just it, for like a week detox. They do. I want you to go to a meeting, and I want you to be vulnerable and raise your hand and say, "I'm stuck." Okay. Yes. Yeah. If you tell me, after 30 days of knocking on every door, put your car on Facebook Marketplace and see if you can get six thousand dollars for it or seven thousand bucks or eleven thousand bucks that's gonna give you six grand and you go buy a five thousand yeah. dollar car with two hundred and fifty thousand miles on a truck. I get it. Not pretty. This is a band aid, I get it. If you tell me you can't, then I I would say then go to a local um uh a local uh credit union and figure out that gap. Or I would work out a, before you did that. I would see if you could work out a payment plan with the rehab place. Mm -hmm. Probably they won't do that, but it'd be worth a shot. Oh no, no, they will. They will do that. That's why I was no interest. But that's why I was on the call because I've already got other debt racked up. Okay, I'm okay with that one. If the okay. last option, and listen to me, this is not a pass for you just to go. Sweet, I can go. I want you to exhaust every avenue because my brother Jade and I have sat with people. They walk out, mm -hmm. and then. Reality is a cold dose of water, and it's easy to fall right back into old habits mm -hmm. when old um, fists hit you in the same mouth. Yeah, because even if you yep. can find a couple of thousand, like even if you can find a couple of thousand from selling things, you visit a local church and say, hey, is there any like, is there a ministry here? What what can I do? Can I serve to earn this money? Like whatever you can figure out, even if you're closing that gap with cash in some in some way, that's going to be worth it to you. Or in t if you got two weeks and you decide I'm going to wake up at five o'clock every morning and drive Uber and I am going to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to work like mad and earn this money, right? There's going to be some little victories there. But if you tell me, hey, man, I, I can't, I'm underwater right now. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm wanting to go to rehab because I'm drinking every day and I can't stay clean. I get that. And I honor that. Okay. But I want you to go to a meeting tonight and I want you to raise your hand and ask that question. Okay. Okay. If you can, if the hospital where you are doing your um, inpatient rehab is willing to say there's an interest-free option here for the gap then I'm okay with that as a last DEF CON resort option if a clinical supervisor has said your only option is rehab. Okay. Okay. So I want you to hang on the line. I want you to walk through. I want you to, when you go through the better help, I want you to click on struggling with substance abuse, struggling with alcohol. And I want you to put in the notes, trying to make a decision on whether I need to go to rehab, go to inpatient, inpatient uh, rehab ca counseling. And then when they reach out, they're going to walk you through an assessment and y'all can make that decision together. Is that cool? Yeah, that's awesome. Thank okay. you so much. I, I appreciate everything. You got, hey, I need you to Your hear, 
I need you to hear me say I'm really proud of you. Me too. Thank you. This is real Thank hard. Thank you very much. You've been, you've been um, drowning for a long time, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. We're done? Okay. Are we done? With all of the drinking? Yes, I, mean, I want to be. I mean, uh, I'm tired of it. Good. Hey, uh, I'm going to put a little star on this. I want you to call back in 30 days with your 30-day chip. And um, we're going to celebrate you on the air. All right? I'm proud of you, my man. This is The Ramsey Show. We'll be right back. Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by 100 if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey, and it will make a difference for your business too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Triple eight eight two five five two two five. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey, it's almost the holiday season, and if you are already getting sweaty armpits thinking about Thanksgiving with family and Christmas, <sighs> I got you. I got you. We've created some new questions for humans this year. We have a Thanksgiving deck to talk about gratitude. You can sit down at the Thanksgiving table and look around and say, no politics, nobody cares. No <laughs> negative nonsense on this one. No TVs. Everybody put your stupid phones down. We're going to ask these questions, and it's for the whole family. We also made a new Christmas deck, and what's super rad, we made a new deck, and this is because you asked for it, for grandparents and kids. It's a great way for you and your spouse to go out to dinner and say, Mom, Dad, you can be with the grandkids, and don't be weird. Here's some cards. We got you. Go to RamseySolutions.com and save your holidays. I love right, that. Let's go out to uh, Detroit Rock City and talk to Sarah. What's up, Sarah? Hi, how are you guys today? Good, how are you? I'm doing amazing, thanks for asking. Awesome, what's up? I am calling because I am debating on if I should move or if I should stay in my current home. Um, we currently have a home where we owe about 130000 on it. We have a great interest rate of only 2.25%. But we have some structural issues going on in our basement. Mm. Um, my husband and I, yeah, and it's going to be really expensive. How expensive? It's going to be maybe like around $70,000. The person okay. who sold us the home was not 100% truthful about the issues that were going on, and he covered up um, some stuff. That's it sounded like he was 0% truthful. So if you were yes, to... He actually, we're dealing with some foundational issues, Oof. and he covered it up with cement. So it got past me, my husband, the inspector. It got past everyone. And now we're in jeopardy of losing our homeowner's insurance. Oh, and Um, and if you don't get it repaired. Exactly. And they're giving us like a very short window to get it repaired. What's the window? um, Like three months. What? 
Dang, son. Uh, if you yeah. were to let go of this house, let's let's pretend you did sell it. Uh, what would you? What would it bring? Right. In uh, profit, fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. Hmm. Yes. And how long have you lived in this house? We only we moved in in twenty twenty. Okay. How much is would it bring you? Well, from the suggestions of my realtor, the house is worth based on the area. The house is worth a lot more than what we would list it for, but due to the foundational the, yeah, issues, yeah, the issues. Yeah, she's thinking that we should list the house at one fifty nine. Um, but if we were to possibly try and at least do part of the repairs and maybe speak to the homeowner's uh, insurance company and see if maybe they can work something out with us. I'm wondering um, about that. I'm wondering if you and exactly your husband do. sit down and put together a plan of phases and say, hey, in phase one, this is what we're getting done. And here's the, the time frame for that. And then in phase phase two starts at, at X date. And here's what we're doing there. And here's the the 12 month plan or the, you know, whatever month plan for this to be completely fixed and healed. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys, did, oh, no. did y'all try to report it as an insurance loss and they came out and went through everything and then they tagged you for you? That even was a mistake. Yeah. That's <laughs> that happened to me before too. That we did. Um, and when they came out, we were thinking that maybe they would cover it. And they were like, no, we're not going to cover it. And we're not going to renew. Shoot. Pretty much is what happened. Yeah. Yeah. I hate that. that, man. You can't even ask a question anymore and they'll just burn you. I want you to, um, while you're doing this, I, Jade's is, is what I would do if I'm sitting down with my wife. Like, if I'm being honest, trying to put skin in this game, I would sit down with my wife and say, okay, we don't have $70,000. I'm assuming you don't have 70000 bucks in cash. Oh, absolutely not. Okay. Um, <laughs> Do you have any money? Um, right now, at the moment, no. We're currently working on the baby steps. We paid off all of my husband's credit card. Uh huh. Um, and we're paying off mine as well. What do you so have left to go on the debt? Um, maybe like around twenty. Okay. Okay. And can I just ask you guys, is combined income? One hundred and twenty. One hundred and twenty. So twenty thousand left in debt. One hundred and twenty income. Yeah, I mean, we're pausing this right now. You, you think, Jade? I, I, I think you have to. If they're giving you three months before you lose your insurance, and bef like, yeah, you, you gotta, you gotta move this to the top of the list, or at the very least, like I said, you've gotta come up with this plan of action. Find out what they're gonna do now. Let's let's give her option B just option, in case. Option B is I want you to call my friends at Xander Insurance, okay? And here's what Xander is: they're they're a broker. And they call okay. a whole bunch of different companies and get you the best rates. And I want you to be honest and talk with um, the broker and say, we got some foundation issues. We called our insurance company and then they did this to us. And let them right. walk you through what the next step is. If they tell you, I'm sorry, this means your house is completely uninsurable. Well, now you know. But I bet that's not going to be the case. Mm -hmm. That is. Okay. Okay. And that gives you option two. Here is not option three. I don't want you going out and borrowing $70,000 on this yes, house. Yes, that's right. Okay? That's you right. think you're stressed My now? That's not passion. <laughs> well, you, yeah, you think you're stressed now. You put seven, you, you go upside down on your house on foundation repair, and you're not going to be able to sleep or breathe. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Okay. I love the idea of sitting down, getting one or two, not not one, getting two or three different um, uh, quotes, quotes on this and have them do it in stages. And what they're going to want to do is come do it all at the same time. You can look at them and smile and say, I'm going to pay for cash oh. as I go. Mm -hmm. I need you to break this up into have to have right now, right this second, what's stage two, what's stage three, and mm -hmm. on and on and on. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That, I mean, look, mm -hmm. these are those moments where you being brutally honest with whoever's coming to your house and doing those estimates, they're going to because there's a real person on the other side of that. Right. And if you say to them, hey, you know, like this is going to cost seventy thousand dollars. Here's what the insurance told us. We cannot afford to lose this house. You know, our interest rate, we can't go into another market where the interest rate is going to be seven. percent. Like if you start talking like that mm. to a human being and you're showing that you're a human being, too. 
a lot of times you will be surprised at what they're able to meet you at. And if you can have them, you know, kind of shift into your shoes of like, you know, what would you do? Mm -hmm. And, you know, is there any way, because if you were in this situation, I mean, it seems like you would want to do the same thing. If you can get them thinking like that, that's good. And by the way, 70,000 bucks on a $150,000 home. What are they doing? Man. Are they going to lift your whole house and redo the whole, all the blocking underneath the whole thing? Well, that's, yeah, that's the thing, too, where we've had, like, three people to come out and give estimates. And 70000 was, like, at the top of the list. But okay. they're all, three of them are saying three different things. One is saying, oh, we can just waterproof it. The other Ooh. one is saying, oh, we can put beams up and push the wall out. And then the third one is that we have to redo the entire wall. Of course. Hey, let me ask you this, uh, Sarah. How do you feel about it? Because I, I'm listening to you talk and I'm like, dude, if I was in my house and they're telling me there's structural damage and like what my house can crumble on me and my family, there is part of me, John, that's like, get me out. I'm out. Yeah, yeah. I don't trust any of y'all to make sure that this is right, <laughs> especially if y'all are all telling me something different. Is that Does that hit a nerve at all? Um, it did at first. Um, we were actually in the process of trying to move and list our house. But when I just looked at the numbers, it just didn't seem worth it to yeah. me. As I, as Dave Ramsey always said, I'd rather eat beans and rice mm. and just thug it out. Yeah. And keep my current home because I love the home that okay. we're in. There you okay, go. And that's what you do. So it community. may be that you have to bite the bullet on this one and pay to have it waterproof so you can get it through the insurance. And... Yeah. then you're going to have to save up money and have them come put piers in that wall mm -hmm. and lift the house up and level it and go through with piers. And that's going to not only get you through inspection, but it's going to, the whole house is going to be structurally sound, right? And yes, it would be cool if I could do a complete frame off restoration of my truck. I can't afford to do that, but I can replace the shocks, right? And it's going to drive great. And it's going to be safe. And so it might be finding some middle ground over time. But call our friends at Xander and get some updates on the insurance because you may want to tell your insurance company, you know what? I fire you. I fire you. <laughs> hey, this is the first hour in the books. We'll be right back on The Ramsey Show. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, get out of debt, do work that they love, and create incredible relationships, and speak clearly. We help with that, too. I'm John Deloney, joined here by my friend Jade Warshaw, and we have um, the lines open, 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Five two two five. Let's run out to New Hampshire and talk to Dylan. What's up, Dylan? How we doing? Hey, I uh, just had a quick question for you both. Uh, I'm assuming John, you'll be able to answer this a little better, but you might. Hey, you know, hey, might Jay, just kidding. Way just smarter than me. <laughs> well, we'll see how it goes. Um, so it would seem that my mom is boycotting my rehearsal and my rehearsal dinner because I changed uh, a small plan <laughs> i don't know i might be able to answer this yeah. one because i know about that dude i'm, I'm okay, laughing with okay. you man like so okay. what what'd you do richard what'd you <laughs> what did you change that was so bad so i'll run it quick so um you know back months ago when we gave them the opportunity to uh kind of plan the dinner it's not what we wanted originally. We told them, you know, we just wanted to have pizza and go back to the Airbnb and just have a good time with the bridal party. Well, my mom absolutely insisted on um, paying for this and making, you know, a big dinner and we go out and all this and that. And obviously, you know, listening to you guys, I try to save as much money as possible, but mm -hmm. uh, she wasn't on board with that. Um, and, you know, I gave her the opportunity for months and months and months. And a few days ago, I talked to her 
and told her, I'm like, hey, we're really thinking about switching back to our original plan. And I was like, I'll give you a few days to uh, figure it out. Well, I just waited one day and I was like, you know what? I should do what I really want to do. It's my special day. You know, and my, yeah, of course, my fiance is too, but. Um, and I decided, I'm like, Hey, this is what we're going to do instead. Um, so and, I, you know, I, I didn't see this coming, vision, but I didn't see this coming, but I want to lean on you a little bit and you push back. Okay. Of course. Why would you take this from your mom? It's like a dinner that she's paying for. Be, well, just cause it's originally not what we wanted. And she, I, I should add to this too. She started inviting a bunch of people that we didn't want there. There it is. Yeah, there, there we go. I, okay. Well, and that too. Lead with that, brother. Lead with lead with that, because that well, that changes the but game. But that was that wasn't the biggest issue. I don't think it's that she didn't really respect that we originally wanted to do something else. Uh, sure. That, that's, and that's how I took it. But. Dylan, is there strings attached to this? As in, as in, I'm doing this for you. So somewhere down the line, there's going to be an expectation of something I want from you. You know, there. I, I'm not going to go as far as that, but it's not yes, a, yes, a possibility. Sir. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> I know about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So here's here's the deal. This is 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 heartbreaking and complicated as this is. This is very very simple. You made a grown up choice, and with all grown up choices, there always comes grown up consequences to those choices. Unfortunately. Your mom is choosing to act like a child. And I mean that with all due respect. I don't like talking about people's mamas, but here we are. Oh, I've said it a few times. Right. So (laughs) one of the hardest things I think any of us will experience is when somebody we love opts out of relationship with us because they are choosing to be immature. Because they are making our whatever, how we're raising our kid, what school our kid goes to, our choice of diet, our whatever you want to say. They make our lives about them. Yeah. And she is choosing to not be in relationship with you and your wife during your big day. And that just hurts. And so it's a both end. I want you to spend time, even just for a few minutes, saying like this sucks man i want my mom at my wedding i hate that she's acting like this and you and i both know she acts like this on other things too this isn't isolated right no not at all awesome and can i add something of course she's gonna come to your dinner well i think she's gonna come i'm hoping so i would write her a letter so bad (laughs) hey here's i'd write her a letter that she can go back to over and over and over again and say we really it would mean the world to us that you come. I know that you you wanted a big a big thing, and I'm so grateful that you're honoring us for this one. We really want you here. Yeah, I mean I, the thing is that she, uh, I mean she won't even come to the rehearsal, which I which is the worst part to me. I'm okay if she didn't want to come to the dinner. She's right? saying she's that. Kind of she's but. saying that, and I don't know her, so I may be totally off base. I think that this is her last ditch effort to get her way on this, and my uh, yeah. I would probably be willing to put. Mm, couple I put some chips on the table on this that she's going to end up there I don't think she's going to miss her son's major days over this now maybe I don't know her and and I'm com- completely wrong but uh, something tells me that when the rubber hits the road she's going to be there what about your old man have you talked to him about it yeah, I actually spoke to him today, and he just initially, you know, it's the first time. Also, keep in mind, my mo- my mother won't talk to me at all. She will not talk to me. Of course. Um, well, you ruined her life, jerk. Oh, well, you know, yeah, absolutely. You're ripping her heart um, out. But I did speak to my dad this morning, and he was saying that she just feels hurt and that yeah. it doesn't have anything to do with the dinner, which I don't believe because this kind of stuff has happened before where sure. she doesn't get her way in this, which I don't believe. But uh, Well, he's probably I, been covering think- her for her for a long time, too, right? Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously he has to take her side in most cases and I don't blame him, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, yeah, no, I spoke to him. And, so yeah, if she will talk to you, it, uh, the best, the best I can tell you is I, what I would do in your situation. And that would be, I would write a letter and I would do my best to deliver it by hand. If you all live in the same, if y'all live in the same community, put it in her mailbox by hand. I was at her house yesterday. Okay. And <laughs> let her have something. Cause listen, if you call her, if you text her, she is going to hear that one time in her through her filter of Dylan is trying to ruin my life. Yeah, yeah. And Dylan's going to embarrass me because I'm in charge of the dinner and everyone's going to ask me why I just did pizza. And it, it, it's all about her. But if you write it exactly. down, people can go back to the letter. 
and back to it and back to it. And sometimes, not always, but sometimes that truth has a way of distilling itself down and she can rest in, he wants me there. Him and his wife are just trying to do things a little bit differently. It's not about me, et cetera. And you hope yeah. that's the case, <laughs> but we all have family. That's what I'm hoping, but that's, that's not a great idea. Truth. And tell your dad, we really, really want both of y'all there. Oh, I, t- I told him that. I-, I told him that this morning when I spoke to him. Like, okay. if the worst case scenario happens, I'm like, please, dad, be at my wedding. Yes. Like, at the very least. Yes. I'm like, yeah, so. Um, yeah, no, it's pretty crazy. But I hate it anyway, for you. Yeah. I hate it for no, you. I appreciate it. Thank you, though. But yeah, that was pretty much it. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, I don't get to, it's not every day I get to talk to somebody who just willy nilly rips his mom's heart out, right, Dude, Jay? look, when it comes to these <laughs> weddings, playing, it's like that. Like, if I had done what all the parents had wanted, I would have been married in a different state. I would have been, <laughs> got, I would have gotten married on a different date. I would have gotten married, you know, in a different dress. Like, they all have their preferences, but at the end of the day, it is your day. It's your day. It's your day. And sometimes it's just a dinner. Do the dinner. But if it is that big of a deal, you made a grown-up choice, and Mm -hmm. that comes with grown-up consequences. That's right. Hey, this is The Ramsey Show. We'll be right back. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to get up to 45% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply. This is the Ramsey Show. What's up? We're so glad you're with us. 888-825-5225. Hey, Jade, um, I'm reading this CNN.com article. It says Americans ran up $105 billion in credit card interest last year alone. And about 1 in 10, about 10% of general purpose credit card accounts in the United States were in what they call persistent debt, which mm-hmm. is this loop you can't get out because yeah. the interest and fees are more than the minimum payments. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Says um, the industry uses rewards to get you in. You think you're going to pay everything off every month, but then some things don't go as planned. Yeah. That's the whole purpose of this show. People get stuck and they get, um, and and it just gets in this loop. And this is just the people in persistent debt. This does not include the other 90% that are locked in at some shape, form, or fashion. It's become part of their life. That's right. You and Rachel Cruz have partnered up with Every Dollar, the greatest budgeting app in the universe to do some trainings. Tell us about them. That's right. So you're going to hear us talk about this all the time. This is something that we're doing consistently about two times a month. We're hosting webinars here at Ramsey Solutions. They're totally free. And the webinars are to teach you how to budget because we hear, I mean, for a lot of people, budgeting is a new concept or if it's not completely new, you were doing it before, but you didn't realize you were doing it the wrong way. That's why it wasn't working for you. So we're giving up an hour and a half of our time a couple of times a month so that you can get this knowledge and so that you can break free from that paycheck to paycheck cycle so that you can learn how to budget. And not just with any app, we want you to learn how to budget with every dollar. And so not only is the webinar free, but you can download every dollar and start using that app for free. So 
we want to help you guys. And this is how we're going to do it. All you need to do is show up. It's during your lunch break. I say it all the time. You can sit and eat your sub sandwich. You can eat your lean cuisine and no one's going to know that you have broccoli in your teeth because you're going to be on the interwebs with us. You don't have to show your face. You can just get this good knowledge and change your life. And I, I just want to talk to the folks out there who are rolling their eyes. If I say something like, hey, uh, how do you lose weight? And um, a friend of mine who's uh, Dr. Lane Norton, one of the best nutritionists on the planet, says, uh, diet and exercise. I can go, uh, you know, thanks, yeah. right? Yeah. And of course, there's so much more to it than that. Yeah. But I look at someone like that, like Lane, who's ripped. He wins these, uh, these awards. He's got a PhD in it. And I just think to myself, I'm just going to go figure it out, right? Mm. And I don't have the courage to say, I need some help. Like, yeah. Can you walk me through this? And I, he's a friend of mine, so he'll walk me through at, at the at the microscope level, at the big level, at, at the macro level. This is very similar. Yes. It's easy to say, okay, I'll make a budget. Okay, the reality is if people knew how to do this, we wouldn't have this mess that oh, we've got. Oh, 100%. Right? And so have the courage mm -hmm. to be vulnerable and say, all right, I'm going to tune in. I'm going to go to everydollar.com slash budgeting, everydollar.com slash budgeting. I'm going to sit there for an hour and a half and I'm going to actually get the tools on how to do this. Yeah. And if you don't want to talk, you don't have to talk. You can let everybody else do the talking. Or if you're like, no, I have specific questions. You can put those questions in the chat. We answer them. Uh, or you can come on live and you can actually talk with us and ask your questions. So this is super interactive. And like you said, this is not just us saying, yeah, I spend less money than you make. This is us going in and giving you the actual recipe. Okay, here's how you go in and actually do it. These are the, the macro steps in order to get this done. So, And by the way, this Micro. is me just, again, being vulnerable. I have taken the headset off on this very stage that I'm sitting on right now and asked Dave a budgeting question. Mm -hmm. I've asked, I've called George and said, hey, man, how do I, I do this for a living and yeah. I'm still getting some coaching, right? Yeah. And so it's, there's no shame in the game. Just <laughs> seek peace in your life. And if you don't have the skills, Go to www.everydollar.com slash budgeting. Mm -hmm. And I also understand that I make myself look 108 years, sound 108 years old when I said www. You did. Go to everydollar.com slash budgeting. <laughs> sign up. The seats are limited. So get up there and do it. And join Jay, join <laughs> Rachel for one of these budgeting um, uh, trainings, man. Get it Thingies. done. Get it done. Get it done. All right. <laughs> the Neighborly Question of the Day. The Question of the Day is sponsored by Neighborly, your hub for home services. When a disaster like a fire or flood strikes, strikes, Neighborly's Rainbow Restoration offers homeowners full restoration services plus mold remediation, carpet cleaning, odor removal, and more. Mm. Download the Neighborly app now to find Rainbow Restoration services near you. All right. Today's question comes from Manuel in Arizona. He says, I'm getting married to the love of my life. I am Mexican American, born in the US and raised in Mexico. I'm a dentist and I'm also on track to pay off my student loans in the next year. I make about $300,000 a year. My fine my fiance is an in Indo endodontist in Mexico. Uh, when we get married, she has agreed to move to the U.S. with me, which means she will no longer be able to practice dentistry. Uh, we have talked about this, and she has agreed to become a stay-at-home wife, especially when we have kids. I make, mo I make enough money to be able to support a family, but I'm afraid of my wife not being able to adjust to not making money. Yeah. What is the best way to handle this and allow her to keep some individuality when it comes to finances? She has worked really hard to become a doctor and she has made good money in Mexico as an endodontist the last few years. It will be a big change to have to depend on me financially. Ooh, Lord. Look, um, I, I'm going to say something brief and then I'm going to let John take this away. Uh, the biggest and best thing you can do is to flip the script and put yourself in her shoes. And how would it feel if you moved countries and let go of a degree that you worked really hard for and a, you know, a career path that you worked very hard for that you enjoyed doing. Um, when I hear the words that says she agreed to move to the U S and she agreed that she will no longer be able to practice dentistry. There's part of that, and she has agreed to become a stay-at-home wife. There's part of that that makes it seem like this was your suggestion and she's 
like, okay. Y'all are working it, through a contract. Yeah. yeah. That, go ahead, John. No, you, you keep going. Uh, my, I, just as a woman, there is part of that that's like, the way this sounds, the way it's worded, and it might be, the way it's worded is it does sound to me like on down the line, she could look up and feel resentful and feel like I gave up everything for this. And I'm not sure that I wanted to do that. And where is your sacrifice? Th- there you go. And so I, in, in my house, my wife was Dr. Deloney before I was. Yeah. And then when we made a move for my job and my me trying to get my head screwed back on straight when mm-hmm. I was struggling with mental health stuff, she went to work part time at a local school. And so she went from Dr. Deloney to Hey Miss in one year. Wow. And then she went to Hey, I'm going to stay at home for a season. And now she's an author and coaches women, does a bunch of their stuff. But all along the way there was this big identity shift and there was some big changes. And what I've come to find out by just sitting with countless women over the last decade, there's no way to win, right? You're not a home enough or you're oh. home too much or you need to be making more money yeah. or how dare you make money instead of, there's just a guilt industry designed to, to keep women from ever getting both feet on the ground. I'm here for that. And so I think the best, the, what I've learned, Manuel, through my trial and error, and I've made many, many mistakes along the way, is I want to back up 30,000 feet and know this. Anxiety is your body trying to anticipate future train wrecks and solve them in the present. So you are going into this trying to reverse engineer what might happen, what she might feel like, challenges she might have down the road. That's going to be a recipe for disaster. What I want you both to do is to say, every 30 days, we're going to check in on this transition. Mm -hmm. How can I best love you right now? Mm -hmm. And expect there to be um, loss. There's grief. I was a doctor and now I'm sitting at home cleaning up spit up all day long. Or maybe she's free. Maybe she hated being a doctor. That's true. So she gets to drive that. Yeah. And I want you to create, Manuel, a home where it's okay for her, her to be sad on some days, for her to be cheering on some days. And your question all the time is, how can I love you this week? How can I love I like you that. next week? And when she says, hey, this staying at home thing's not for me, let's have that conversation then. Yeah. But let's don't try to predict every bad thing and try to solve it right now because you're going to create chaos and anxiety in your house week by week, month by month, year by year. This is The Ramsey Show. We'll be right back. Hey guys, being free to make your own medical decisions is a big deal these days. Christian Healthcare Ministries gives members the freedom to choose the doctors and providers they want without the frustration of worrying about networks and with no waiting period to join. It's a membership-based nonprofit ministry where hundreds of thousands of Christians share funds to pay for and pray for each other's medical bills. For over 40 years, CHM has helped families living across all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Check out more today at chministries.org slash budget. Show. I'm John Deloney, joined by Jade Warshaw, 888-825-5225. Let's go out to Indianapolis and talk to Madison. What's up, Madison? Hello. How are we doing? Good. I have a question. So I'm wondering if I should sell my personal car and just use my boyfriend's company car, his personal car, to pay off some of my debt. Hmm. You want to sell your car to use your boyfriend's company car? Correct. I don't think that that's a good idea. <laughs> this doesn't end well. Yeah, because what ha- like this is where my mind goes. I'm gonna just say it. What happens if you get in an accident in your boyfriend's company car, which means the company's paying for him to use it for work transportation? 
So I have coverage through his work. We actually work for the same company. Do you have coverage on his vehicle or you have coverage because you just work there? Like you're listed on his vehicle. Correct. On both of them. So his personal car and his company car. I have coverage. Okay. So it's, it's completely kosher. Yes. And my car essentially is just sitting in the driveway right now and I, I don't touch it. So I don't know if I'm losing money by it just sitting there. Um, I still owe on it. So I'm still making payments, but I just, I don't know if it's beneficial to just have my car sitting here and not use it or if I should sell it. I think that's different. I think that's independent from him. I'm more nervous about you. You're going to be very exposed. Okay. And I know, and when I say this, you're going to go, not us. It would never happen. (laughs) No, I know. No, I know. I understand. But you know what I mean? That's why I wanted to ask. Yeah. If you're my sister or you're my daughter or you're just one of my buddies who's a woman, I would tell you. If he marries you, great. Y'all make financial decisions together, and y'all go in and share a car and all that. Yeah. If it's a boyfriend, I mean, Jade and I would not have jobs if every every well laid plan ended right. And so and you're se- you're selling your car, yeah. exposing yourself to him and his company, which happens to be your yeah. company too. That's just a lot of you are hitching your wagon. To some unsecure horses and getting dragged <laughs> into the wild, right? That's that just okay. makes me nervous. What's your car worth that's okay. sitting in the driveway? About nine thousand. Nine thousand. Is it in it, it? Is it paid off, or you have payments on it still? I ha- I'm still making payments, so that's my biggest thing. Is I'm paying insurance, I'm making my monthly payments, and I'm not using it. And how much do you still owe on it? About five thousand. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep it. I'd okay. pay it, it off. Yeah, keep it and pay it off. How quickly can you pay it so off? Here, so that's that's kind of the second part of this. I have some debt, and I just don't know how to approach my debt and what's the most important thing to pay off first. Okay, let's figure um, that out. What uh, List okay. your debts for me, just ha- as, however so, they come to mind. Okay, so I have credit card, which is about 3000 Okay. I have... Um, house so we actually have a house so do you want me to include my mortgage uh who's who's listed on the both loan of us. both of you are listed on it yes all right we'll get to that in a minute all right <laughs> okay. um madison <laughs> courthouse this weekend yeah we'll deal with that <laughs> protect yourself yes okay what so else then appliances we have about four thousand. Oh lord okay keep going and then um my car was about five thousand and then i have medical debt mm-hmm and that's a big one, and I've I've paid a lot of it down, and that's about fifteen hundred now. Okay, so it's only fifteen hundred. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then the mortgage, just so I know, uh, what is it? <laughs> it's like, about nineteen hundred a month. Yeah, but how much is it the total? Oh, total is about two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. Okay, like John said, how you guys need to get married. You're playing house. Just, just <laughs> and, do it. And this is not like for religious reasons. This is for you to protect yourself legally because if it right. hits the fan, this is going to be so messy and so crazy that you're yeah. protecting yourself by making sure that this is all legally wrapped up in a marriage. Um, yeah. Does he have any debt? He does not. He does not. Okay. So until you get married, but you're getting married this weekend, <laughs> <Right>. um, <laughs> we're going to list these debts. And he, and I'm, I'm, I'm laughing, but I'm being serious. Like get yourself the certificate, yeah. go online and do the certificate. And then you guys plan a party for later and have champagne and have it fun. But for now, let's get this legal stuff locked up. Is there any reason that he would not want to do that? So when we graduated college, um, we sat down and we had a conversation and it really came down to what do we want to do first? And I'll be honest, we both agreed that we would rather go with the house first. Because of? Because we wanted to live somewhere. So our landlord actually um, told us about 30 days before our lease was ending that he was no longer going to be renting and he was selling the house. So we didn't have much time to really find a place to live. So that's when we started looking for houses and we lived with his parents for a few months. So you solved a 30 day, uh uh-oh, with a 30 year commitment? Yes. (laughs) And that doesn't really, that still doesn't really answer my question. My question was, if you said, hey, I want to get married this weekend, so we're protecting both of our butts in this marriage, is there any reason that he would not want to do that? That was my question. I don't 
think so. I think it's more of just the traditional essence of y'all busted up tradition. I was gonna say y'all don't care about traditions. Traditions, <laughs> traditions <laughs> gone. It's not those traditions. You guys, y'all okay. guys borrowed money on a dishwasher. Y'all have thrown tradition out the window. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess what I'm trying to get at is I want to make sure that he understands that we're not playing house forever. And yeah, honestly, legally, you need to be protected and you need to make him understand that, hey, if this goes south, there is nothing that is going to um, there is no way that this is going to be decided fairly because there's no marriage here. So if you guys break up and you cheat on him or he cheats on you or you just right. dislike each other, you have a house mm -hmm. together and right. he can just up and leave and leave you with that debt or you can just up and leave and leave him with that debt or he, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's so much tied up. No, here's, here's what makes yeah. me scared. Here's what makes me scared. And, I, and we're, we're consciously leaning on the other side of the seesaw because you're on the happy side. Oh my gosh, look how great. It's awesome. Right. We're on the other side. If something goes sideways in your job, if something right. goes sideways in your relationship, you don't, and you have sold your car and you're just driving around town in his car, you don't have a mm -hmm. home, you don't have a car, you don't have a job. And here's what's important right. about that. You know that risk and, you, and I'm going to believe you, that risk is very, very small. Mm -hmm. But do you know what doesn't know that risk profile, your amygdala, the part of your brain that is designed to keep you safe all the time. It knows one tiny misstep and you are homeless, carless, unsafe without groceries. And your body would be failing you if it let you sleep all night in this current situation. Your yeah. body would be failing you if it let you have deep, connected, intimate moments with your boyfriend because it's trying to not die. And so when we talk about like, dude, go do this now, your whole body goes, whoo. And if it, if the thought of getting everything lined up so that you could feel safe, if that makes you feel more anxious and more scared, then y'all go see a pre-marriage counselor tomorrow because y'all need to deal with that reality. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. And, and so it, it's it's us loving you because we just see the other side of this this thing going sideways. And no one plans for that, no, by the way. Nobody plans right. for that. And right. I wouldn't wish that on you for one Not second. At all. I want this to work out perfectly and I want it happily ever after mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Right. But whoo, man, you're exposed, 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 exposed. But to answer your money questions, we've just told you how to handle your anxiety and your relational questions. Mm -hmm. Once you get married this weekend, you guys are listing the step from smallest to largest, and now you're combining and getting after this together, right? With your okay. combined income, combined efforts, your debt now becomes his debt. Both of your paychecks now become our paychecks. Both of your debt becomes our debt, and you guys move through this, and you process it together. If you're not going to get married, if you're like, hey, I don't care what you guys say, then you pay this off by yourself, and you need to look into a way of getting one of your names off of that mortgage, all right and figure out how to do that because i if you're not going to get married you don't both need to be on this deed work two jobs three jobs make it happen get this debt paid off asap we'll be right back Hey, if you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, you need Y Refi. They're not a debt settlement company and they're not connected to a bank. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Y Refi, you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget 
and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAMSEY or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. Hey, listen, if you are sick and tired of all the financial, just the downer financial news, and it's you're finally waking up to the fact that nobody in Washington is coming to save you, and you listen to this show, and you've been listening to this show, and you just think, gosh, I wish everybody would just pull their heads out and start living these principles. Pull their heads out of where, John? Any orifice, any orifice they have shoved it in. Um, <laughs> um, and you think, how do I get this out there? You don't have to spend one penny. All we need you to do is leave a five-star review, click subscribe, put the little thumbs up button. Wherever you're consuming this, please um, subscribe to it, push the buttons, like it, all the things, and it kicks it up into the algorithms and it puts this in front of hurting people who Google can't breathe in so much debt. How do I help my wife feel better about our finances? Then it kicks these videos up because you all have taken just 10 seconds to um, do this. It doesn't cost any money and it helps out your neighbors. It helps out us. It helps out you. It helps out everybody. The only way this mess gets solved in this country is from the bottom up, grassroots homes like yours and mine deciding we're unplugging from the matrix and we're going to make different decisions. So thank you so much for your continued support. Let's roll out to Columbia, South Carolina and talk to the powerful Haley. What's up, Haley? Hey, good day. How John? How are you? Good. How are you? I wish I could be better, honestly. Mm-hmm. Well, what's um, up? I was hoping to get some input on how to best address certain financial behaviors in my family while also financially preparing myself for my future at the same time. Mm. Okay, go for it. Unpack that Um, for us. Right. So I'm 25. I'm set to graduate with my master's and take board exams um, to be a clinical informaticist in the next year. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I did have to move home due to COVID and it being my graduate year that year, a lot of job opportunities kind of fell off. So, um, I was required to basically get my, it took the time to get myself financially together. Um, moving home, I realized how awful really our finances were. Um, I'm kind of treated like the family bank slash emergency fund. Yes. Um, Anytime any emergency repairs or anything come up, I'm usually the go-to person to go and fix it. Mm. Um, I've honestly contributed financially to my family for years. The earliest memory would be 10, balancing checkbooks, helping Mm. to pay light or water, choosing between light and water. Mm. Um, Do you still live at home? Right now, I'm really trying to get myself in a better place as far as getting student loan pay, paid off, which will be done within the next at least three or four years. Um, Haley, do you st- Haley, 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 do you still live at home? Yes, sir. Okay, when are you moving out? I need a date. The target date would be January of 2025. There's no after way. After all board exams are over. Why? you got to move that way up. Yeah. And you know that, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Can I ask you why you why you feel feel like you need to stay home until that point, or why you felt like you needed to stay home until that point? Um, in twenty twenty five. Gosh, I'm sorry. I'm trying not to cry. No, it's okay. okay. It's heavy. It's, this is heavy stuff. Mm-hmm. Listen, let let me just say this before you answer it. No ten year old should be paying their parents' water bill. Period. 
And I'm sorry that you as a 10 year old had to take that responsibility on. And it's going to be the 25 year old you who's walking across the stage with a graduate degree. I'm so proud of you. It's going to take your 25 year old having a hard conversation, maybe for the first time and saying the gravy train stops here. And then you're going to feel guilty beyond all guilt. And they're going to come after you and say all the mean things about you. And they don't get a vote. They've used you long enough. Fair? Yes, sir. Okay. So when's your move out date? Now would be after exams, which would be June of next year. Nope. Nope. Let's 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 help you figure, let's help you move this up. Let's help you move it up. Okay. Are you earning any money right now? Yes, ma'am. How much are you earning? Approximately 30, I'll say 36 a year. What's that right per now? month? What are you taking home per month? Taking home per month would at least be 21 to 22. Okay, so you're 1000. Okay. And hundred, sorry, I'm so I, sorry. I I got you. And you've got your student loans, right? How much are those? I'm currently still in school. Okay, so they're not due. Great. Any other debt that would hold you back? No, ma'am, that's it. No, ma'am, that's it. That's excellent. Okay, let's start doing some research this weekend. When you get off the call, I want you looking around your area. Have you done that yet to see what an apartment would cost? A one bedroom, one bathroom in, in a part of town that's safe? And that would get you where you need to go as far as school is and everything put, else is putting concerned. putting up a note in the grad school office and saying roommate needed? Mm-hmm. I have. And I honestly, I I start and then I back out because I feel start to feel guilty. Yes. Yeah. And so you've probably heard me say this a hundred times. I'm going to say it 10,000 more times before I'm done being on the air. From this point forward... I want you to choose guilt over resentment every time. And here's why. You are choosing to avoid feeling guilty. And in the process, you're coming to hate your family. Fair? That's fair. Okay. Let's don't do that to them. Let's don't do that to them. Let's choose to draw boundaries that are going to keep us safe and keep us whole. And let's choose to separate where it's appropriate. And it's been appropriate for you for a long, long time. Because I can almost guarantee you that they don't have their hooks in you just financially, but it's emotionally too, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. You're worth being free. And your parents got to learn how to pay their bills. What happens if you disappear? You go get an apartment and you're out. What happens to them? Um, as far as I know, financially, already in holes in various places, um, there's no retirement anymore. There's, I had at one point started a college fund. I did not know that was liquidated until just before I was applying to college. Hmm. So your parents stole from you? They, well, they, the they stole from I don't you. want to say it like that. I, I'm going to. They yeah, stole from you. They did. They stole from their child. Not okay. I want you to put 60 days on the calendar, and I want you to come up with a plan, even if you have to take some more hours. And I want you, after finals this semester, I want you moving out over Christmas, if that's possible. It's possible. You're worth being free, my friend. How does that sound? Honestly, they're Mm -hmm. bragging. They've probably been telling you for a long time that not only can they not live without you, but that you're nothing without them, right? Close. Yeah, you are. You have been doing the hard work of changing an entire family tree, not only by yourself, but in spite of all the people hanging on. 
you're about to find out you are stronger than you ever thought possible. And you've grown muscles in places that most of us never have to because we don't have that kind of trauma. And the muscles aren't to drag them along. That's right. I want you to go see your, your college counselor, college counseling center. You pay into that fee. And there's some great college counselors out there. Go sit down and say, I want to make a transition plan. It's time for me to get these chains off my arms and legs and for me to fly on my own. We love you. I'm so grateful for you. This is The Ramsey Show. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people get out of debt, build wealth, find jobs and purpose that they love, and grow incredible relationships. I'm John Deloney, joined by my great friend Jade Warshaw, and we are taking your calls on just about everything. 888825. 5225 is 888-825-5225. Let's run out to New Ham- back to New Hampshire and talk to James. What's up, James? How we doing, man? Good, you? Good. Good, good. What's up, man? Um, my question is, should I pay up my credit cards or should I finish repairs on my apartment to gain in- more income? Your apartment to gain income. It's are you yes. are, you're not living in the apartment, you're renting it out? So um, I ha- my house is kind of like a duplex, but not really like okay. a duplex. So I right now I live in the house and I have two roommates helping me pay the mortgage. Okay. Um, and then I could you know, it's gonna cost me a, a, a good chunk to finish it. I it, it's I've been going through every time I rip open a wall, I find more and more issues. Yeah. So yeah, I'm stop probably gonna walls. stop doing that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, um, okay, so you live in this house. You've got two of your buddies living there with you, rent free. Um, I'm pretty much yeah. I'm pretty much rent free right now. Pretty much, or you are? Oh yeah, I, I am. Okay. <laughs> so, how much debt do you have, uh, including the credit cards? Put all of it in there. Tell me all of it. Uh, just um, seventy-seven and a half thousand. Did you say just seven and se- seventy-seven and a half thousand? Yeah. Okay. That's it. That's like that's credit cards, personal loans, and car loans. Okay, so let's break it down. What's the personal loan? Personal. I have two. It's um just under twenty grand. Okay, ten thousand each. Um, one's like eight. The other one's like twelve. Okay, and then what else? Keep going through the rest of it. Um, credit cards. Um, no, sorry. Two car loans. Um, one's seventeen. One's like sixteen. Seventeen thousand and um, sixteen thousand. Yeah. Why do you have two cars, homie? I have three. Um, I have my truck that I bought years ago. Um, I use it to do a bunch of stuff. I I I drive back and forth from um, New Hampshire pay- to California for work. Is that um, one paid for? Out. Um, my truck. Um, no, that's the one that owes, I owe. 17 for okay is the third car paid for or does that one have a note as well yes oh yeah yeah it's a 2013 prius okay the 2013 prius is paid for what's it worth uh like probably what i paid for it 65 to 7 no chance how many miles does it have on it a hundred of uh, 169,000 it's worth i bet you can get 10 for it but that's okay. either here know, yeah go so, to kelly blue book you can get 10 for it Keep going through the steps. Yeah, um, but the thing is with the Prius, like, I want well, to just go through the steps. Keep going through the steps. I derailed yeah. us. That's my bad. Keep going through the steps. Um, I owe. So we did personal loan one, personal loan two, car one, car two. Keep going, rolling down yeah, and that. Then, um, I owe like one credit card, is like seven. Another one's um, a little over two grand. Okay. Um, there's another one that's like six or seven. Okay. And I think it's one that's 
Off the top of my head, I, yeah. uh, and then I think another one's like four. So how do you feel right now, listing out all that debt? Yeah, it's not great. Yeah. Um, what's the house worth, this duplex house, um, if you were to sell it? I think, I don't know, like three thirty-five, maybe, I hope. And what would it bring in profit? Um, I owe two thirteen on it right now. Okay, so not much. No. Okay. Um, how old are you? Uh, 29. I'll be 30 in February. When did you buy this house, this duplex? Uh, in December 2019. December 2019? Yep. Uh, you need to sell this house. You're doing, you're going about everything in the wrong direction. And apparently it needs, like you said, every time you open up a wall, there's something more than it needs. And you need to sell this house. You need to sell this Prius. And I want you getting in an apartment with those same two <laughs> roommates. Only this time they're paying part of the, the rent. And I want you to get yourself a clean slate and let's restart this. And let's knock these debts out one by one so that you can breathe. It sounds like you... Here's what, when I look at this, here's what I see. I see a guy who wants to be successful financially, but went around about all the wrong ways to actually do it. And it's backfiring and it's causing you to call two people that you've never met on the radio to get help. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I want you to be successful financially too. Can we both agree that maybe you went down the wrong path? Uh, yeah, possibly. Yeah. Well, it's some things. Yes. Which, all things. Which things do you all think things. you did right? I'm just curious. <laughs> Which things are right for you in this equation? Um, my job and my truck, probably, because I, I do make money with my truck and my car. Okay, so job is good. What kind of job do you have, by the way? Um, I work for the government. I fix um, warships. Oh, cool. And what are you earning doing yeah. that? Um, this year, I should um, hit 98, hopefully okay, 100. Good. And so the 17,001, that was your work truck, right? Yes. Okay. The 16,001, we're selling that. We don't need it. So yeah. you can sell that one and let's keep the Prius. If you, if you can't use your work truck for like everyday stuff, let's flip it. And if, but if you can use your work truck for day to day, then let's sell the Prius and car number two. Yeah. Yeah. So that clears out quite a bit of debt right there already. And then after that, we've got these personal loans and we can just work through those bit by bit by bit. And if you sell this house, it's not going to bring much, but whatever it brings, we're going to put on the smallest debt and we're going to pay that one off. And then whatever is left, we're going to pay the next one off. And we're going to work through this and we're going to pay this debt off. And when it's all said and yeah. done, if you do it my way, if it's when it's all said and done, you're going to have no debt. You're going to have three to six months of expenses in cash sitting in the bank and you're going to be investing 15% of your $98,000 salary every single month. And you're 29 yeah. years old. You're going to look up. All of this is going to be done. Oh, let me look at this right quick. Everything is going to be done in about 12 months if you hit it. And if you do the things that I told you, in a year from now, you're going to breathe and you're going to have a clean slate and you're going to have cash and you're going to have investments started. And you're going to go, oh, man, I'm so glad that on October you know, 27th, I called John and Jade. Yeah. Yeah? Um, I, I do have 23000 in the bank, though. All right, let's Good. use it to pay off this debt. Keep 1000 aside as a starter emergency fund and put the other 22000 on this debt, and you're going to go in order. You're going to knock out the 4K card tonight, the 6K card tonight, the other $2,000 credit card. You're going to work through these credit cards, smallest to largest, and then you're selling those cars. And when you look up, you're going to have uh, eight, well, you're going to have about $27,000, and you're going to blow through that so quickly because you have a $98,000 income, and you're single. And you're on fire. And now, my brother, you're going to be free. This is The Ramsey Show. We'll be right back.
This is The Ramsey Show, and we are coming up on the holiday season, and many of you are all ready. I trip it out a little bit. Just the thought of sitting around the Thanksgiving table with all the cousins and the grandparents and all the screens and all the political opinions and all of that one cousin that can't shut up about COVID. <laughs> and so listen, I got you. I got you. Questions for humans. This year, we took him one step further, and we got the Thanksgiving deck. We have the Christmas deck, and we have grandparents and kids. And that was a special request that we got so often that we sat down with some grandparents and some kids, and we're going to save your holiday season. All right, so Jade, I pulled a few questions out of the Questions for Humans Thanksgiving deck. This is designed for people to take to Thanksgiving dinner or right. lunch or whatever, and Avoid all the disastrous conversations and oh drama. All is, right. <laughs> is that possible? <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. I want to look my kids in the eye and say, hey, your old man got in the ring and tried. <laughs> okay, the hit me. Hit families me. all fell apart, but we gave it a shot. <laughs> um, all right. So what is one Thanksgiving food item that makes you gag? Green bean casserole when it's made the wrong way. What's that mean? The wrong way. Let me, I'm going to just say it right now. <laughs> the folks who are getting a can of green beans and putting cream of mushroom soup on it <laughs> and then crumbling up those French onions, y'all ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> it's so nasty. That's, That's awesome. All I'm He's saying. like, That's how I do it. That's no, how I do it. My mom taught me the right way to make green bean casserole, and I've never seen anybody make it this way. What is it? You get the green beans, and you can use canned, mm -hmm. like, the French cut kind, so they're like nice and thin. You saute it with onions. You add some sour cream, Swiss cheese Ooh. into the sauce. Pour it in a casserole dish. Then you take cheese crackers. And don't, this is the one time you need to buy Cheez-Its from the store, name brand. Don't come in here with cheese flavored, you know, rounds <laughs> or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Get the real Cheez-Its. Crumble them up. Bake it in the oven. You'll thank me later. Never make that nasty casserole again, that other kind. All right. Look, I, I like my, my crispy Frenches, but I'm going to need that recipe. Okay. Yes, we're on okay. it. Okay. You it. got it, Austin. Austin does not have a, a discerning palate. That's for sure. That's for sure. I'll see what he brings for lunch. All right. So I'm going to preface my question with this. I'll eat anything. Okay. I'll eat anything. Like I'm a big Steve Ranella fan, like the meat eater stuff. Like, okay. I, okay. I will eat anything. I won't eat armadillo. And that, like, so I've drawn a line there. I right? thank you for drawing the line <laughs> at armadillo. AJ's like, oh, it's delicious, man. But also, when somebody opens up a can of canned cranberries and it keeps oh. the tube of the can, it keeps the... It, yeah, it, it, you can see the indentations. I, I can't wrap my head around how somebody puts that inside their body. Now, Austin, I've seen him like rub it on his arms and his face. He's gross. But listen, <laughs> I don't... I, I just look at it and think... I just want to throw up the thought so of eating gross. that. I Look, just can't wrap my head. And it's I was so gonna be easy quiet, to make but real I cranberries, by the way. Yeah, do I, I was going to be quiet, but I got to defend myself. I make my cranberry jam from scratch. Thank you. There you go. Thank scratch. you. Scratch. That's a, a, none of this canned stuff. All right. And it's All so right. easy. All right. So last question. Thanksgiving question. What makes our family weird and what makes our family the best when it comes to Thanksgiving? Well, depending on who asks the question... I might say, you're the one that makes it weird. <laughs> <laughs> what makes our family weird? You. 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 <laughs> um, what makes our family weird and what makes us the best? Oh, boy. Th that's a loaded question, John. I can't answer it on the air. Right. Uh, the things that make us great is what we endure together. And the thing that makes us weird is that we still hang out with each other, even though all that we've endured together. <laughs> Excellent. I will say what makes my family weird is... I'm going to answer this as carefully as I can. We have a really um, dark sense of humor in our house. Ah. And almost every time our Thanksgiving meal ends with really inappropriate jokes. Oh, gosh. And my mom storming off. And it's become <laughs> like almost, it's become a, uh, 
It's become almost a family tradition. Like a challenge. And then my dad, I look over in his face or in his hands, and he always says, guys, y'all get to go home. I got I got to deal with this. Oh, and my mom is like, I just thought by now we'd be... <laughs> and it's every year since I was about 12. I got to hear some of these jokes. They're not great. Um, they're not... They're, I'm not proud of them. But it just evolves. And... Um, but I think that's what makes us not the best. But also, I think it's what makes us the best is right. there's just no holds barred. This is going to shock you. I am kind of the quiet, stable one at that table. If that tells you anything about where it goes. I'm so shook. It's all, <laughs> It's fantastic. Questions for humans. Go to RamseySolutions.com and rescue yourself and your family this holiday season. Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and grandparents and grandkids. Hey, this year, go visit your parents and go on a date and hand your parents these cards and they can deal with the little ones this time without just handing them digital babysitters. All right, let's run out to Atlanta, Georgia and talk to Skyler. What up, Skyler? Hey, um, need some advice on what my wife and I should do with uh, her car. <laughs> what, okay. What does she want to do? So what she wants to do, so we figured out that it's burning oil and that uh, piss rings are bad, but it's still running fine right now. Okay. Um, I'm thinking that we should sell the vehicle now while it's still worth like six to $8,000 and get like an equal trade or like a $10,000 vehicle. And she's thinking because I'm a service technician, so I drive a service vehicle most of the time, so we're together in her vehicle 95% of the time. She's thinking, sell my truck and sell her car and get a nicer car. Then what would you do for your service vehicle? Well, I mean, the service vehicle, I would drive it for work, and then whenever we're not in work, Uh, or whenever I'm not at work, we pretty much be together most of the time. I I don't want to sell my personal vehicle. I mean, it's paid off when baby step 3B. Oh, so there's three. There's your car, your wife's car, and your service vehicle. Yes. Got you. Why doesn't, um, what about option three, which is spend a couple thousand bucks and get this thing fixed? Well, the piston rings are bad on it, and it's pretty much... Like, it's valued at about $6,000, and you pretty much just might as well put a new engine in it. And that's okay. going to be mm-hmm. almost the same value. My challenge, my, my almost total. So, as a service technician, here's my gut response I'm going to scrape together $10,000 for me and my family, and I'm going to walk in and I'm going to buy this car that you know is bad. Mm-hmm. That part is the that, that part makes me feel uncomfortable. It's, it feels yeah. unethical to me that you're going to, you as a guy who can see this thing coming or like, I'm offloading this sucker right now and some other sucker family is going to have to deal with it. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. It's it's just, uh, you know, I, we just see it coming, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, no, like, I, I see it coming. I don't know what to do. I see it coming, but it feels like a... Um, I don't know, John. I feel like if he sells it to a dealer, they're going to do whatever they have to get it to do to get a driver ready. Maybe I mean, if he sells it to a dealer and lets them know, hey, this thing's bad in here. Yeah. I can see that. Or if he's if he's doing private sale and you're looking up the value with the issues, mm-hmm. then you're disclosing, hey, this, this is, is going to need a new engine. So yeah, we're going to sell it at $4,000 instead yeah. of ten. I think as um, long as you're... You and I took a call earlier where somebody put a pretty sheen on some foundation issues on a house, right? right? And right. now this family is stuck and they are trapped inside this house because they can't afford to get out and they can't afford to stay. That's right. Um, and so I, I, as a guy who doesn't know much about cars, it makes me uncomfortable. It feels like one of those not by your hand but in your lap situations, which is I hate this for you and it stinks and there's an ethical way out of this and then yeah. there's a... Like, I I guess as long as you tell the truth. Yeah, tell the truth, sell it, put some cash with it, and get her another car of of equal value, or if you can afford to put a little more cash with it. Yeah. And That might be the best thing to do. Yeah, just be honest. Yeah. Honesty is the best policy. Yeah. This is The Ramsey Show. We'll be right back.
This is the Ramsey Show. Let's go out to Houston, Texas, and talk to Amy. What's up, Amy? Hi. Um, I have a question. My question for you all is uh, my husband and I are wanting to downsize, and um, but my mom uh, lives with us here, so we're not sure what to do. Ooh. Why does she live with you? Um, I we, we have two kids under the age of two, and initially when I got pregnant, um, she retired, so it kind of was like a great, um, it was going to work out where she kind of helped me out, but she also um, has her own business that she's trying to get off the ground and stuff, mm-hmm. but um, I guess if you asked us today, we don't know why we all still live together. Um, <laughs> well, it worked um, out when she could offer the child care. Now, how old are your kids yeah. now? Um, they're, they're still, so one is, uh, two and the other one is eight months. And, um, yeah. And so she does contribute, like, um, she does, uh, help out a little bit, but, um, we're currently on baby step one, starting over again. We went before we had kids, we were at a better spot. We were at baby step two, but now we're back down to baby step one, trying to get back to our emergency savings. What happened? Um, just, I think um, just bills got higher and uh, we we live in a house. We moved from an apartment. We were all in a two bedroom apartment Mm -hmm. and my husband and I and the baby were in one room and my mom was in another Uh and then she retired and, and well, she had retired before moving with us and then she moved in and then we uh, got an offer to move into a house a little bit under the market rate. Um, through a friend and um so we moved into that house but now it seems like we're house poor yeah for somebody else's home just everything to keep up with um in a home from the lawn to the gas bill and your mom's not paying but, your mom's not paying anything to live with you guys well she is paying uh to live with us and oh. um but she's like she's paying but it's not we, we ran the numbers and if we moved to like a one bedroom to be gazelle intense with our kids we would really um we would be saving almost six hundred dollars a month opposed mm-hmm. to um what she contributes the difference um is really 50 bucks of us living in an apartment being gazelle intense or her living with us it, it's really not I'm going to suggest that you guys that don't move into a one bedroom mm-hmm. apartment with two little kids. Me too. Okay. That's um, okay. I, that's that's what we would call napkin math. That works on a napkin. It does not work in reality. Y'all okay. are going to go crazy. Yeah. In there. Now, okay. I know there are people listening to the show or people who have family members that are doing that because they simply have to. So I'm not knocking okay. it. That is not y'all's situation. That is a napkin math problem that y'all did that would accelerate your current situation Mm -hmm. what does your husband do for a living um he's a operations manager he uh sprays for pests what does he earn um he earns about 50 and what do you earn a year um i'm a stay-at-home mom and i i I do bake on the side okay Okay. how are you a stay-at-home mom when the whole reason the grandma came to live was so she could help with the kids well, it's not, it, it's not that kind of help. It's kind of, um, like when she's around, like, can assist, um, cause she has her own things kind of going on. What did you do for work so, before you were a stay at home mom? Um, I, uh, cooked a, a restaurant. Okay. I need you to go back to work. Okay. And In some capacity. And we're going to figure that out. There's going to be a way that you're going to work quarter time, work part time or work nights or work weekends. But you need money coming into the house because if six hundred dollars a month is making or breaking and causing you guys to think that maybe we'll move into a one bedroom apartment with four of us. There's other ways to get that six hundred dollars back in your pocket. And it's called your Saturday and Sunday. Or your husband's going to spray all day and then he's going to go work the 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. shift or 8 p.m. to midnight shift after dinner with the kids. Yeah, he just interviewed to um, deliver pizzas. Okay, so, good. And, and, I've been, and I bake on the side and stuff. Um, Baking on the side is, is that's, that's not going to bring the money you need. Yeah, that you can do that while the kids are awake. I'm talking about things to do to make even more money when your husband's home like at night okay. and also on the weekends or when you're when grandma's home. And by the way, if grandma's still going to live there, this is when you 
cash that chip in and you're like, grandma, I need to go work because we're in debt. Yeah, we're struggling and we're going to do one of two things. We're going to sell this house and go to a two bedroom apartment and you're going to find a place. We're going to, or here's the three things. We need to raise rent mm-hmm. um, because we're trying to find a $600 spread. Our husband, my husband could take a second job. I need to work a little bit and we're going to have to raise the rent a little bit on you. If we're going to keep all, keep this house mm-hmm. um, or, um, and I'm going to need some help from 6 a.m. until 10 a.m. because I got to go back to work because mm-hmm. I got to get this. We got to get this debt down. How much debt is it, by the way? Uh, we have 42000 altogether, uh, a car and um, student loan. OK, how much is the student loan and how much is the car? The student loan is 30 and the car is 12. OK, so the car is OK. Um, student loans 30. All right. Yeah, that's right now. You bringing in an income changes everything. Because if you've tr- if you've proven that you guys can live a life on fifty thousand dollars, then if you got another income, you c- if you if you found a way to earn forty thousand dollars a year, it would change your entire life, and you'd be out of debt in a year. Do you see how I did that? Yeah. And even if that means you having a hard conversation with your mom and saying, "Mom, I know you've got your thing on the side." We're going to have to do one of two things because the numbers aren't working out. Mm-hmm. We're going to need some help here because I got to go back to work or um, we have to sell a house. And we're going to move to a, a two bedroom apartment. Mm-hmm. And we don't own the house. We're renting the house. The house you're in right now? Yeah, the house we're in right now is a house we're renting. How much That's are you paying? We were... I got you. How much are you paying per month? Uh, 15, currently 15. It's supposed to go up to 17, 50. So that's why mm. we're what is she paying? looking at options. Um, she pays, well, we had started decreasing her rent because we thought she was going to leave. She said uh, it was planned that she would leave in November, but um, things changed. So currently she pays 350 Yeah, that's not enough. Yeah, it sounds like you, yeah. So it, all in all, the, the rent is eight. Eighteen hundred and fifty, and she's just paying three fifty of it. Um, well, the rent currently is fifteen, and she pays. Uh, she was paying five fifty, and then it gradually went down as she was getting ready to exit. But now it seems like I'm not uh, mad at that. She's paying a third, and I don't okay, think that you're going to find. I don't that's think you're, I don't think you're going to find anything cheaper than this. Honestly, yeah. what did you? I mean, did you look at two bedroom apartments before you looked at one bedroom apartments? And well, if fifteen hundred so, is five hundred a month. That's how I had. That's the number I had in my head. For a two, for a one yeah. bedroom. No, no, for this apart, for this house. Yeah, I yeah, for the mom you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's fair. Five hundred is fair. Yeah, I yeah. think that's fair. I, my question, I guess, was: Is there a two bedroom? I feel like when I look at this, I'm like, that's a pretty good price to rent a house that is housing all of you. Mm-hmm. If you go, I don't know that yeah. you can find anything cheaper no, that's no, no, no. you know what i'm saying like i don't think no, that you should get out get rid of this house this rental yeah, situation the cheapest thing i found was a one bedroom with a study yeah <laughs> yeah no that's not gonna work do, hey here, here's a bigger question do you want your mom out um be, be honest it, i'm i'm the only child so it's really hard to say that because nope so no, you feel not. guilty you feel forever. guilty and you love your mom just because you wanted to move out doesn't i love my mom to the moon and back. And I don't live with my mom. Right? The, both of those things um, can be true. So essentially, yes, because I want to live the life of my husband and my children. Of course okay. you do. Of I, course you do. It's time to have that conversation. Hey, that's not wrong or it's bad. That's not a bad thing. That's so normal and so normal <laughs> that you want to live your life in your house with just your husband and your kid. There's nothing wrong with that, girl. Okay. So on the financial, I guess we just... You got to start working. Um, if you can find 30 and he can find another 10, you're out of debt in one year. 12 months. That's a drop in the bucket. And it's going to be awful. And do it anyway. It's not going to be that bad. They've been living on 50000 as it is. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It's choosing your heart, right? Yeah. You guys got this. You're yeah. going to have to make some sacrifices and some real choices, but you can do it.
Today's scripture of the, of the day is Isaiah 40, 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. The great Lars Ulrich, founding member and drummer extraordinaire of Metallica, says, Stretching your parameters is a necessity if you want to keep growing. I like it. Hey, when you hear Isaiah 40, 31, does it make you think of Remember the Titans? <laughs> Always. Like eagles, y'all. <laughs> like eagles, y'all. I you remember that? Love that. <laughs> love it. Love anyway. That. All right, let's go out to Birmingham, Alabama and talk to Philip. What's up, Philip? How's it going? We're rocking on to the break of dawn, brother. What's up? Hey, man, I just had a quick question. So, uh, well, one thing to start off, my wife and I started uh, doing the, the snowball two months ago. We've already paid off $35,000 Ooh, in debt. Whoa. What'd you Love sell? It. Did yeah. you sell something? No, well, I'm in sales, and so uh, I had a big motivator to uh, make some extra money, and I had my biggest month ever and was able to uh, pay off a lot of debt really Dude, quickly. Awesome. So. Congratulations, man. That's fantastic. So what's up? Yeah. All right, so um, question. My grandmother is being taken advantage of financially by my aunt. Uh, I'm wondering how I can step in and help. How have you already tried? So, I haven't tried yet. Okay. Uh, I haven't said anything to anybody. And the situation I'm about to share, I, I'm not even supposed to know, but my mom told me because it's one of those, it's like an emergency situation. So mm. um, I'll give you give you some context. So my on the, on the back end, my grandmother, she struggles financially, didn't invest in retirement, didn't know who Dave Ramsey was ever until I, I started going into him uh, a while back. And So, unfortunately, she wasn't set up. Now she's in her 70s, has no retirement, and she just draws Social Security. And I think she brings in like $1,400 a month. So, Mm -hmm. she's, 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 she's okay. She's not like, very thin. Yeah. Very thin. Yeah. No margin there. So, she came to me two or three years ago about um, how does she, um, how does she get some breathing room? And so, I, I essentially bought her house for what was owed on it and, put some money into it to fix it up. And she lives there for free. She just pays utilities. And that was kind of a retirement thing. She and I worked out. So that gave her a little bit of margin. But, you, but your name's on the, your name's on the house. You own it. Cor- correct. Okay. Correct. So, cool. um, so anyway, so she's been fine for two or three years, like not rich, but she's doing good. Well, my, my aunt, who is her daughter, um, is, uh, very bad with money. Very, very bad with money. And, almost weekly it seems like is asking my grandmother for money nothing big it's usually 40 bucks here 50 bucks there but that stuff adds up especially when it's coming from somebody with no margin um so anyways it's always bothered me i hadn't said anything it's my grandmother's money whatever um but recently uh last week i got a call from my mom um my my grandmother ended up paying a, a bill a utility bill or something for my aunt and my aunt apparently took a picture of her debit card and ended up using it for other things as well wow. without telling my grandmother. Wow. Yeah. And last month, um, my grandmother is at Walmart checking out, getting groceries, and car gets declined, which is, one, embarrassing, but, two, it's, uh, it's one of those, you're like, oh, my God, I know I have money in there. It's not there. What's going on? That's straight up so, illegal. Yeah, it's stealing. Yeah. Yeah, so she goes and checks, and uh, apparently about $500 has been spent um, without permission Mm -hmm. from my grandmother's card um, on an online game that my aunt has been playing. Um, And so anyways, grandmother confronts the aunt, and the aunt goes, oh, I don't know how that happened. Mm -mm. You know, that's crazy. I'll try to get your money back, that whole thing. And that's kind of where we're at. And I'm not supposed to know about this because my grandmother knows how I'm going to yeah. know, react. Well, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Um, so this is one of those situations, not by your hand, but in your lap. You yeah. didn't ask for this situation. You didn't ask for somebody in your family to be so deceitful as to steal from an elderly mother. Wow. And quite honestly, quite frankly, you didn't ask for your mom 
to not get involved with her mother and her sister, which is her responsibility. As you started talking, my first question to you was going to be, call your mom, or why haven't you called your mom? And your mom has passed the buck to you. And so yeah. I would, if I'm you, I would tell my mom, mom, you have 24 hours to get involved, and then I'm going to get involved. You've given me this information, and I can't sleep at night. I'm the homeowner. I've already bailed this whole family out of problem one. And I'm about to go get involved again, too. And by the way, I'm going to call the police. I was about to say. Mom's going to get her credit, her her debit card changed. She, she needs to do that before the day is over. Because she, this, she did that already. Okay, good. Um, but are you calling the popos? I'm calling. Because yeah. that's what I'm doing. I'm calling the police. At the very minimum, I'm making it very clear to my, to my aunt, because nobody else in the family will. If you come near grandmother again and ask for money, I call the police because you stole this. Right. And I understand that this is awkward and weird. Unfortunately, your mom puts you in a very awkward, weird situation. Unfortunately, your family has not been as responsible with money as you have been. And they have put you in multiple awkward, weird positions. And if people keep doing that to me, I'm going to take the straightest path out. And by the way, okay. grandmother can do what grandmother wants to do, as much as that pains me to say. So if she says, I want you to butt out, you are not calling the police, get away from me. I don't want, that's going to hurt. Mm-hmm. It's going to hurt like all bloody hell. Mm-hmm. And she gets to do that because she's a grown up and it's her money. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Why did your mom not make a whole bunch of calls and ring all the bells. If I found out my little brother was stealing from my mom. Oh, it's going down. Oh my gosh. He would never in a million years do that. He's such a person high integrity. Why didn't your mom get on the phone with your, her sister immediately? Well, she, she said something to her or, or sorry, she wanted to say something, but my grandmother goes, Hey, I'm telling you this. I shouldn't have told you. Don't say anything to your sister. Mm. Don't say anything to anybody. Well, then don't tell and my me. my mom is... Exactly. I know, right? My mom calls me. I'm the responsible one in the family. I, when I speak, people in the family listen because they're like, you know, like, he means what he says. He says what he, he means. Yep. You know, all that stuff. And well, so, good for you for, for um, breaking this family curse. I, I, I would tell my mom, you've got 24 hours to get right in the middle of this because I'm going to. And she'll say, okay. oh, Philip, don't do that, please. Grandmother told me in confidence. Grandmother wants someone to help, or she wouldn't have said anything. Yeah, That's what I'm thinking. And she's thinking, exactly I thinking. told my daughter, and nobody's helping. Well, she's hoping there's a way this could be done where no one's feelings get hurt, and no one has to know about it, and that, that you can just sweep it under the rug. But that's, you're so far, like, that. it's just not possible. No. At this point. Yeah. Yeah, I'd put everybody on notice. And here's the other thing. You're sending a message, one of two messages. Number one, if you don't want me involved, you better not tell me because I'm getting involved. Number two, um, I don't play this game. We treat each other with dignity and respect. We don't steal from family members. We don't steal from our elderly mothers. Wow. We We don't commit fraud in our own house. I won't stand for that. And... There we go. At the end of the day, also, this might even be a little bit weirder. That's your home. You can tell your aunt you are not welcome in my home. Right? Yeah. You could tell your aunt, I'll no trespass you on my property because grandmother's a tenant tenant of my place. Mm -hmm. But not welcome. Oh, it was an accident. I didn't mean to. It wasn't an accident. That's not an accident. Mm -hmm. She got caught. Yeah. She's trying to make some money on an online game. And wouldn't you know it, she didn't win. Man. Golly. Hey, I'm glad you I'm glad it's you, Philip, because you're a person of high integrity and high character. Um, just just for a moment like this. Hey, I want to thank all the guys in the booth and Skylar. Thank you, America, for tuning in and listening to the show. Great job, Jade. Hey, be kind to one another. Pay off your debts. Don't steal from your mothers. <laughs> we'll see you soon right here on the Ramsey Show.